Brawry Junction, I've had my six dollars worth. Here, my diversion north to Quetta in Baluchistan starts. It's a part of Pakistan I hardly know. I have read all about its railways, where British engineers solved some of the most difficult problems they'd faced anywhere in the world. First, I couldn't resist this chance to get a really good look at the historic bridge across the Indus at Rory. I'm travelling on a new bridge. The old Lansdowne Bridge had, in its day, the longest girders in the world. Such structures were designed and manufactured in Britain and were only assembled and erected on site. The engineers in Britain scoffed at those they called the Meccano engineers. Perhaps they had no idea of the problems involved in handling girders weighing 86 tons, and that in 1889, let alone the threats from tribesmen who respected no law but their own. The Lansdowne Bridge, like almost everything else on the Northwestern Railway, was heavily fortified. The province of Sindh was one of the last areas of the Indian subcontinent to be conquered by the British. Jacobabad, on the other side of the Indus, is named after the Englishman General John Jacob, who first pacified this unruly region. The memory of the soldier who brought peace and also built roads and dug canals is still so revered that his tomb is a shrine. The people of Jacobabad still believe that a thread measuring the exact circumference of his tomb and then made into a necklace will ward off fever. When other towns in Pakistan called after Englishmen were being renamed, the people here refused to lose their connection with John Jacob. <laughs> Fakir is a holy man, and that's what they tell me he is, although he was not a Muslim. A custodian of the shrine, who doubles as a public health inspector, tells me that in General Jacob's time, women could even go out alone at night without fear of being attacked. I asked for one of General Jacob's threads to bring our film good luck. Many would say that's sheer superstition. But the longer I live in this part of the world, the more I realize how foolish it is to mock faith in whatever form it comes. Out of Jacobabad, I got a lift north on a goods train. I was really in luck. It was pulled by one of the few steam engines still operating and flying the Pakistan flag. The locomotive was one of the last batch of steam engines to be imported into Pakistan and was manufactured in Canada nearly 50 years ago. It's lasted far longer than any diesel locomotive ever would. something to be done on the footbed of a steam engine. 
and steam drivers still have their own locomotives and take great pride in decorating. So this is the water gauge. Very important, huh? Very important. If it goes too low, then whoop, firing. Yes. Hope it blows up. In Pakistan, steam engines burn oil simply because all the coal was left behind in India at partition. This line was built at the rate of more than a mile a day, completed in 1880. It crosses the desert to Sibi, one of the many places which is said to be the hottest in the world. Thirty-two British soldiers once died of heat exhaustion in a train crossing this desert. When the railway was built, it had no rivals, but now goods can be moved faster by road. And, like many other places in the world, the railways are feeling the pinch. Of course, rail is still much safer, especially in Pakistan, and trains use much less energy. But sadly, the government seems to favour road over rail. Pakistan railways have been starved of investment. Hello? Kori kori ji? 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 Now, back with diesel on the Quetta Express. On the last stage of my diversion north to Quetta, the Brahui Mountains rise up out of the desert. The only way through them is the Bolan Pass, one of the two historic routes taken over the centuries by invaders of the Indian subcontinent. But it was one thing to take camels or even elephants through the Bolan Pass, quite another to take a train. Twice during construction, floods poured down these dried up riverbeds and washed away the line and bridges. A new route, higher up, then had to be found for the track. This railway was crucial to supply British soldiers guarding the pass against the armies of the Russian Tsar. The line is one of the longest gradients in the world. It rises 5,000 feet in 50 miles. with its 20 tunnels and 368 bridges was completed in 1897, 21 years after the route was first surveyed. A train a day was then able to carry what previously was carried by 2,500 camels. But 
camels seem to have survived the competition. These nomads are on their annual migration from the high mountains of Baluchistan to winter on the plains of Sindh. It's taken nearly five hours to climb to Quetta, the garrison town that the British built when they moved their army up to the Afghan border. The public are no more cooperative than the railway passengers. In Pakistan, everyone does their own thing, even at the risk of their lives. Or of their livestock. is the capital of Baluchistan, and perhaps the most fiercely Islamic of all Pakistan's cities. 